Welcome to part 9 of the guided tour series. In this section, we will complete the physical model. To do this, we will create components below the system, allocate functions to components, create physical interfaces, and assess the model. Let us now assume that our Autolink system is built from two components, Autolink Vehicle Segment and Customer Support Center. Pause the video and create two new component elements as listed on screen. Open the property sheet for the Autolink vehicle segment, then pause the video again to complete the element definition as outlined on screen. Compare your property sheet to the one shown on screen. When you are certain your element is complete, then click on the Customer Support Center element to view its property sheet. Pause the video again to complete the element definition as outlined on screen. Let's now view the physical hierarchy diagram of the Autolink context component. Click on the Autolink context element, then click on the hierarchy diagram icon. Select Physical from the drop-down list and click OK. Compare your hierarchy diagram to the one on screen, then close the diagram. Now that we have completed both our behavior model and our component hierarchy, we will allocate the leaf level functions to the components that will perform them. Pause the video and in the element browser, establish the performs relationships to show that the leaf level components, Autolink Vehicle Segment, and Customer Support Center perform the leaf level functions shown on screen. Remember that performs is the inverse of the allocated to relation. Now, we'll take a moment to view each in a custom hierarchy view. Select Autolink Vehicle Segment, then click on the Hierarchy Diagram icon. Click on the More button to expand the dialog. Then click on Custom in the Definitions list to create a new custom hierarchy. In the Candidates pane, select Performs and click Add. This will add Performs to the Selections pane. Click OK, and a Hierarchy Diagram window will open displaying the custom hierarchy. Pause the video and repeat the above sequence for SIS.1.2. Customer Support Center to open, review, and close the custom hierarchy. By allocating our leaf level functions to components, we have established the interfaces between our components. We will formalize this in our model by establishing physical connections between our components. Physical connections are represented in core using link elements. Click on the Element Table icon to switch to the Element Table view. In the Project pane, select Link. Before entering data, we will change the information presented in the Table columns by selecting View, Table, Edit Columns. This will open an Edit Link Columns dialog. In the Relationships pane, select Connects To and click Add. In the right-hand pane, move Connects To to after the Name column by using the up arrow. In the Relationships pane, select Transfers and click Add. Move it to just after the Connects To column by using the up arrow. Click OK. 
the elements table will update to display the new column order. Now pause the video and create five new links as defined on screen. Now pause the video again and establish the relationships shown in the table on screen. To do this, right click in the relationship field and select Edit Targets. The connects to targets are the two components that a link connects. The transfers relationship identifies the items that are passed along the link. We have defined components and links and establish their interrelationships. We can now view this graphically by opening a block diagram. CORE provides several different block diagram representations. Drawing upon classical systems representations, CORE supports the interface block diagram, displaying logical interfaces between components and physical block diagrams, displaying physical links between components. Supporting SysML representations, CORE also delivers two variants of the internal block diagram, or IBD. A standard IBD displays interfaces, and a flow IBD displays links. For this analysis, we will use the flow internal block diagram, which displays linkages, ports, and items being transferred across the links. Select Autolink Context from the Component class. Click the flow internal block diagram icon. In the flow IBD, the components are represented by icons and the links are represented by labeled lines, where the label is the name of the link with the items being transferred shown in curly brackets. As with all core diagrams, this diagram can be edited directly and the information residing in the, inf and the, information residing in the integrated system design repository will be automatically updated. By default, when links are connected to a component via the connects to relationship, the default flow is bidirectional, or in-out in SysML terminology. To change this, double-click on a desired link to open a property sheet. Select the connects to relationship. In the targets and attributes pane, double-click on the direction attribute and select the desired direction from the drop-down list. To show some of the power of developing our system model in an integrated system design repository, let us illustrate with a typical systems engineering example. Suppose that the customer wants to know the impact of exchanging out or replacing the Autolink vehicle segment. First, close this property sheet and close the diagram, returning to the Project Explorer. Then, select the component Autolink vehicle segment. Then, click the Hierarchy Diagram icon. In the drop-down box, select Behavior Impact of Physical Change and click OK. This diagram shows which functions and which inputs and outputs may be impacted. It shows that the replacement component must perform functions displayed in the second row. In addition, the data interfaces between the replacement component and the other elements of the system context are those items in the bottom row of the hierarchy. Traceability indicates which parts of a system design satisfy specific source requirements and allows easy impact assessment of changes to system requirements. Traceability also supports internal consistency, which is difficult to attain when applying traditional techniques on real systems. This means that all incompatibilities are checked and resolved, the design is complete where all interfaces and environments are specified, and the design is feasible where all critical elements are demonstrated. Using relationships for traceability makes it easy to detect unfulfilled requirements and unresolved issues. Close the hierarchy diagram window. Select the class requirement from the project pane then switch back to Element List View. The drop-down box at the top of the Elements pane applies filters. Drop down that box and select Unaddressed Requirements. 
This will filter the elements list to display only those requirements that do not have targets for the basis of, refined by, and specifies relationships. We see that requirement ORD.1.6, Availability, has not yet been addressed. This is just one use for filters. There are other predefined filters that allow users to perform other checks on their model. The filters can also be extended to help highlight any set of conditions that the user wants to focus on. This concludes Part 9 of the Guided Tour. Part 10 will address generating formal documents. If you have any questions or concerns, let me know. Email me at support at